As dean, you're over all the academic research and service programs of the school. And one of the, th the things that is most important is not only maintaining academic programs, but seeing needs out there and where new academic programs could meet new needs. And that's how we came about this idea. In fact, it was Martha's idea. She came to me and said, what about safety engineering? So it sounded like something we ought to do. So this fit right into our model. In fact, I think it expanded nicely what we did because one of the things we wanted to do is not just have academic programs that are for the traditional student, the one that gets out of high school or the one that just gets out of an undergraduate program, but can we have an academic program that meets the needs of professionals, people that have been out there five years, ten years, even twenty years. And that's what this program does. So I look at this as an academic program. I also look at this as somewhat like a service program because we're providing a service, something that's really uh, expanding the horizons and opportunities for professionals. And most programs don't do that. This program is specifically designed for professionals, and that's very different than the traditional master's. Well, one of the probably the most obvious things is the level of enthusiasm that these students have for this program. If I could take the enthusiasm of these professionals and I could infuse it into 18 and 19 year olds that are in my traditional undergraduate programs, there's no telling what we could do. So I think it's that enthusiasm that they bring to this. They seem to be hungry for something that they can learn that is actually going to be transferable really immediately into their profession. And they love it. I wish I could get that enthusiasm into an 18-year-old because they're kind of like, oh yeah, I gotta take this, gotta take that. It's just, it's. Uh, I wish I could go take it the other way. If you talk to them, they'll say, well, Martha is fabulous. Dr. Bedez has, um, and she is. She's she's an outstanding teacher. But it's also the peer-to-peer -peer learning that becomes very important for this particular program. They're learning from each other. So somebody that may be in the oil refinery business has a safety issue talking to somebody in the pharmaceuticals. Now you might on the first hand say, what do these have to do with each other? But there's transferable skills, transferable knowledge, and they are teaching each other and I would say, if you ask Martha, she said, yeah, I've learned a lot putting all these courses together, but I learn every time we get these students together, I learn from them as well. School of Engineering, this was our first one that's totally online. And that was, that was um, Martha wanted to do it this way. I said, do you ever want to bring them to campus? Are they going to be able to connect if they never see each other? Well, the answer was, yeah, absolutely. I think one of the things that we've got to get across in this online learning is these students can be very, very connected. The technology is there where they interact with each other. Uh, they see each other in these formats. Uh, that once a week they get together and when I talk, my, pick, my, my face is up on the monitor when somebody else is talking. So they get to know each other. And I would dare say that I think from having listened to these students talk about this online courses that they have developed for this program, that they probably have more interaction than traditional classroom. Because we've all gone into that traditional classroom. You go in, you sit down, the professor goes up to the board, they write a bunch of stuff, and engineering is a bunch of problems. You sit there, bing, the class is over, you leave. Now how much interaction is that? These are constantly interacting, so I think if done correctly, and that's a big thing, if it's well developed, these online courses can provide even a greater opportunity for interaction. So now these students, having never seen each other except on a monitor, they're coming and meeting each other for the first time and they're hugging each other like they're long lost friends. And that's over the video, that's over distance learning, that's over Blackboard. So I think, uh, I think it's amazing opportunities that technology brings to these online programs. But the key is you really have to embrace that technology and use it correctly. Or it is as boring as sitting in that class and listening to the professor. Most people think online courses are 
Um, the everybody remember those old correspondence courses you got a book in the mail you get a workbook and it's kind of dry it's nothing like that if done well and so th th this is coming along tremendously well right. students so I think Martha and she'll say this probably better than me but she she wants to teach how to use engineering design to prevent prevent injuries, right? So how does how can you bring that engineering design into the whole process to to prevent injuries and have a safer work environment? So that's the engineering side. But when these professionals bring this in to their companies, they can be met with resistance. Yeah, the safety stuff is gonna cost us money, it's gonna slow us down. So how do you manage that process? And how do you really show a leadership where you can get the upper leadership to begin to buy in and see what you're doing? So it's not just good enough to put in the engineering principles and have a great program that, yeah, it, your, your plant would be safer if you were to do this. But if you don't have the management and leadership skills to get it implemented, get it funded, and have the employees begin to embrace it, you have nothing. So this management and leadership are key, I think. And that's a tough one. Um, I guess we all see that in whatever business that we're, that we're in. I know, listening to some of the people, um, you've got people that have been in charge for a long, long time. And they really don't want to do this. And how do you, so I think some of the skills that these um, students are learning is how to, get somebody that's been in the business 35 years and say, well, you know, we haven't had that many accidents, but we're, we're okay, we're okay, and begin to turn them around or get turn around the, the foreman and the person on the plant floor, floor. I think she looks at how to begin to use management skills at all layers to get it embraced. And it's going to be different from getting the foreman on the floor, you know, on it and getting the one that's been 30 years that's in control of the budget to actually implement enough money to be able to make some changes that would prevent a catastrophic, you know, an accident, somebody getting killed or something. So, so I think she understands that there's all these levels and you have to end up embracing and working with all these individuals. And that takes both management, but it really takes a lot of leadership skills. Because if you make somebody up at the top mad at the beginning, you shot the whole thing. And that would be, that's terrible. Yeah. Um, this time last year, we were just trying to get the program approved so that we could implement it in mid-August. So and it's been an amazing amount of things that have happened to make this program. I think uh, amazing, aha, one, there are about 60 students now involved in the program. And for starting something this time last year and having 60 students sign up, that's been an amazing thing. I think the other amazing thing is whereas I thought we would have a wide variety of um, companies, industries associated with the students. It's been far more than I ever thought. From pharmaceuticals to the mining industry to um, petroleum industry. I mean, it's just been NASA. Uh, the Army is interested in it. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's all over the place. So you begin to see how important safety is across a whole spectrum. And I think that spectrum, I was kind of maybe thinking it was here. Oh man, it's, it's, it's way, it's much further out than I thought. So I just see all kinds of opportunities for this program to grow. That's probably was affirming, but then shocking in a, in a very good way. Um, it, I think the only thing um, is if you're in the safety area and that is a component of what you do and what you're you know, in charge of, look at this program. Look at the courses. Do not let the fact that it's totally online uh, scare you. Uh, embrace it. Uh, a lot of people didn't think, ugh, this might not work for me. That, that online experience is going to be so much better than you ever thought it was going to be. So don't let the online kind of keep you back. 
On the other hand, the online offers you the opportunity to take a class like this, and you don't have to be anywhere near Birmingham, Alabama. So it's, you know, but it, it does, I think, bother some people that it's going to be flat, that it's going to be dry. It's not going to be flat, and it's not going to be dry. The other side of the coin is this, and um, it is a Master of Engineering, but this curriculum is dedicated and supportive of the professional in the safety area within a wide range of companies. So yes, it has engineering principles. You do not have to be a major in math to do this. There, <laughs> So don't let the fact that, oh my goodness, it's engineering hold you back. Look at the courses, look at the syllabus of each of these courses, and, and look at the management, the leadership courses, and maybe those engineering might be a little bit on the harder side, but on the other side, you may flourish in the management and the leadership courses. So don't let engineering keep you away. Uh, you're going to do fine. If you've been a professional out in the safety area, I think this is a program uh, that you definitely need to look at and it has something to offer.